Hey viewers, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're in the shop and I'm going to show you some 3D printed stuff. So this is a good homestead topic because if you're building out a homestead, you're most likely going to have a shop or a shop like uh, space, right? Store tools and whatnot, and you want it organized. Well, as you can see, mine is absolutely not organized, but we're getting there. We're getting there. And one of the things uh, to get there is tool organization. And what better tool to help you with that than a 3D printer? So what I've done here is printed off a variety of things with a 3D printer to help with that, mainly with my Milwaukee uh, battery powered tools. So I figured I'd show you what I've done so far and uh, kind of what I've planned to do and just give you an idea of what's out there and what's available, right? So this doesn't just apply to Milwaukee. Pick your favorite tool, you know, cordless tool, battery platform, and you can find this stuff. So first off on the M12 side, we've got tool holders here, right? Uh, I've got one straight, which I don't really like. Uh, I like this angled one better. So it angles out at 45 degree and I 3D printed this. It's just, I mean, it takes the shape of a battery so that you can dock your M12 tool on there, right? And, uh, and hold it and keep it nice, you know, on the wall where you can see it. Uh, it's very handy. Along the same lines, right? I've got a, a battery holder. Right, so M12 batteries, I just 3D printed a holder. That one will hold three. Uh, the, I've got them for singles and doubles as well, but I figured I'd just might as well print a three and have the space. I'm going to print more of these to store more tools, but I am, uh, I'm out of filament. I used up all I had, so I gotta get some more. Um, same fashion, I've done some stuff on the M18 side of things. So here's a battery holder that actually clips in. All right, very simple to hold the battery and then also holding a tool so in this case i've got my my router right but just mounts you know on a flat surface i mean this could also be mounted underneath like under a cabinet right and it would just hang for my case i just mount to there and just mount with screws and it holds so quite uh quite handy and i've got a variety of those tool mounts uh, to play around with to to mount all the tools so I'm going to do some more as soon as I have more filament but I used it up uh, each of those you know these big tool holders you know they use probably a hundred grams or more of filament so on a you know you get 10 of those or so nine of them out of a out of a one kilogram spool so you're talking yeah these aren't like the cheapest things in the world you're talking a few bucks in plastic you know to actually print this but that's still cheaper than anything that you might find to buy, I'm sure. So, and if you get PLA in bulk, you can get that cost down. But right now, at about 20 bucks a kilo for PLA, that's kind of what you're looking at for cost. Uh, so, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with organization. I've got some more plans for 3D printed shop organization, and I will show it to you as I do it uh, for, you know, screws and that kind of stuff, right? Uh, the other thing I was going to show you on the 3D print side... And this is also a good thing for if you've got a little bit of filament left on a spool and you need to use it up and you're not sure what to use it on, you can do these, all right? So this is a little uh, rocket uh, shaped thing that will uh, you can use to, to cap off a uh, partially used uh, caulking tube, right, to save it. So these uh, print out, you know, very easily. I think they only use about three grams. So I used, I print off, you know, probably six or seven of these uh, just to use up some, some old filament that I couldn't use for anything else. But you can use them to seal off a partially used caulking tube. So that's, that's a very handy thing, right? Uh, to have and a good use of the extra filament. So uh, that's all I got. Uh, shop's a mess. I'm looking around to see if there's anything else in the shop that I haven't shown you. Uh, I can't remember if I've shown you that uh, wall I got stood up, just partial wall in the shop for, uh, I'll eventually sheathe it, right, to, to wall off that balcony so they don't fall up to the reloading bench in the reloading area. All right, I got some more shelves moved up. Oh, I did upgrade my lighting. I'll show you that. So previous videos, you recall I just had two light bulbs up, you know, right there on that uh, purlin. So we've uh, since... 
added seven, rerouted those. And so I've got seven spread out on the peak, just light bulbs with keylesses, uh, nothing fancy. Uh, just to add some additional light, because especially up there reloading, I, I just needed more light. So that, that helped out a lot. Yes, I know the color hues on those two light bulbs are different. It's what I had in stock. Uh, so I eventually can change them if it really bugs me. I, it it kind of bugs me now. I'm sure it bugs a lot of you. But it's also a shop, so I, I don't really care. Uh, so there's, uh, there's that. I think that's all I got for you. Mainly wanted to show you the 3D printed stuff and uh, kind of take you along the journey of shop organization, such as it is. Um, you know, I guess future plans I can talk real quick. I mean, I want to sheathe the walls and insulate and, you know, climate control the area. But for starters, I need to, I need to get uh, kind of the inside purlins done and then I need to get insulation and then sheathe the walls, right? And all that takes time and money. Uh, I've done a little more, uh, kind of uh, the inside purlins using up some scrap lumber. And one thing I did to try to help with that is for long pieces that I didn't have, I made long pieces. Say I joined those two boards together with pocket screws, uh, not the strongest joint in the world, but for this application of just holding up uh, half inch plywood work perfectly fine, especially with an overkill of a two by six. But a lot of this is crappy wood that I'm not really wanting to use anywhere else. And so might as well use it here. So you can see I've got a lot of it done on that end wall in the corner. And then also here on this kind of bay, just taking it up to eight feet. Uh, I didn't need to take it any higher for now. So, so I've wor been working on that. Um, but it's baby steps, right? Like, Shop's a mess because my miter saw is here right in the open. I'd love to put it on that wall, on that far wall, but I can't do that until I build a bench, you know, for it, right? And I can't build a bench until I get the wall up, at least without having to maybe do double work or really think about the design. In either case, I don't want to. So uh, I think that's all I got. Shop's come along. The shop is at least workable and functional. I can do stuff in here, which is, a, which is you know, always a plus. So anyway... Thanks uh, for watching as always. I uh, hope you find the videos at least halfway informative and thanks for coming along the journey uh, with me as we build out the property. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.